Okay, this is part two of topic 8.13 in AP Calculus BC curriculum, uh, arc length of a smooth planar curve and the distance traveled BC only. Here we go. We are using definite integrals to calculate arc length. We're going to do this one for part two, our part two video. We're going to uh, derive the circumference of a circle. And so we're going to take a look and let's say that this circle is centered at the origin and its radius is R. So this is the point R zero. Now we know that the equation of a circle is uh, centered at the origin is X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. What I wanna do is solve this for Y. If I solve this for Y, I ended up getting the square root of R squared minus X squared. Now. It's important to know that I'm only considering the top half of the circle because we know this is not a function. When we solve it for y, we get plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x squared, but I'm only gonna consider the top half of the function. If I integrate this from negative r to r, this function, that will give me one half of the circumference of the circle. And if I multiply by two, that will give me the entire circumference of the circle. I like to use calculus to confirm some equations, formulas that you've learned in geometry in, in the past years. So that's just so you can see, it's pretty cool how it works. What's really cool is that some of those people derived those formulas long before we had calculus, and it wasn't quite so easy. So we're going to use the arc length of this circle, the upper half of this circle, to derive the circumference of the circle. Um, do some what we did a little while ago. So when we look at this, what we're going to look at now is dy dx, because recall the arc length, length formula for the circle is the integral from a to b of the square root of one plus dy dx squared all times dx. So we need dy dx, and this is gonna give us, because this is the same as r squared minus x squared to the one half, this is gonna give us one half times one over, so it's going to be r squared minus x squared to the negative one half. So that's going to make that over the square root of r squared minus x squared. And then in the top, we're going to use a chain rule to get minus 2x. So this simplifies to the twos cancel, and we end up with negative x over the square root of r squared minus x squared. That's our dy dx. So we're going to plug that in to our arc length formula and get this as the integral from negative r to r of, I'm gonna pull the negative out front here and get x. So well, let's keep the negative inside. Negative x, oops, forgot what I said. I'm just gonna start, start integrating dy dx. This is the square root of one plus, now all of this squared is gonna give us x squared over r squared minus x squared, and that's all times dx. So when I square, when I squared that, it's gonna give me x squared and then the denominator squared, the negative is gonna go away. So we're gonna end up with, let's put this up here. This is gonna be, I'm gonna simplify what's inside there, still the integral from negative r to r of the square root of r squared minus x squared plus x squared. What I'm doing is getting a common denominator under the square root over r squared minus x squared. This equals the integral from negative r to r of the square root of r squared over r squared minus x squared. If I factor, oops, times dx, not lose our differential there, times dx, well, let's see what we do. Okay, now what we're gonna look at here is I'm gonna pull out an r squared in the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to put an equal sign here. This is going to give me 
square integral from negative r to r of the square root. If I do this, r squared over r squared, that's just going to be 1. This is going to be times 1 over 1 minus x squared over r squared. You can see if I distributed that r squared through, I would get still r squared minus x squared. Again, it's all times dx. And we know r squared over r squared is just 1, so that cancels. And we know the square root of 1 is just 1, so that cancels. So this gives me the integral from negative r to r of the square root of 1 is just 1 over the square root of 1 minus x over r squared times dx. I'm going to let u equal x over r. That's going to make du equal 1 over r dx so that I can change this now if I'm, u is x over r then the integral, the limits of integration would change if I change my variable to u. Let's go ahead and change inside. I'm going to have 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. And then I need 1 over r dx. I have dx. So I need 1 over r in there. I'm going to multiply the 1 over r up top. And then I'm going to multiply the r on the outside. So that's going to give me r here. And this is going to change that to du. That's my u substitution. But now I'm going to change my limits of integration. If x was negative r, then u becomes negative 1. And if x was r, then u becomes 1. So now I'm integrating from negative 1 to 1 with respect to u. And so I end up with r, and this is, of course, arc sine or sine inverse, u evaluated from negative 1 to 1. So here we get r times sine inverse of 1 minus sine inverse of negative 1, which is, let's see, I'm going to have some room here. I think I'll move up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Which is equal to r sine inverse of 1 is pi over 2. Recall, this is what angle? What angle gives me a sine of 1, and that's pi over 2, and minus what angle gives me a sine negative 1, that's negative pi over 2, so it's minus negative pi over 2. Pi over 2 minus negative pi over 2 becomes pi over 2 plus pi over 2, so this becomes just r times pi, but remember that was just the top half of the circle, so if we multiply that by 2, then 2 times s is equal to 2 times pi times r, and that's equal to the circumference of the circle. It's just a way to verify with a commonly known formula. It's not real easy to derive, that we can derive it with calculus also, and that the arc length formula works. That's part two of your 8.13.